Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about variants. Now, variants were added to the C++ 17 standard, uh, and they're you know, basically a kind of a replacement uh, for unions. They're, a, they're basically like a type safe union. So let's you know, talk about, you know, just refresh ourselves what unions are. So you can think of unions as a special kind of struct, but only one field in that struct is ever going to be uh, active at a given time, right? So if we say have a float, a double, a character, and an integer, if we set the integer to be active, right, uh, none of the other fields are going to be active, right? So we're only going to be accessing that integer, right? And once we start storing, you know, maybe larger things, we actually get some space saving benefit. Um, so that's really kind of the motivation for using something like a union. But, you know, there's an inherent kind of limitation of unions, uh, and that's that the union itself doesn't know which field is currently active, right? And so what do we, what do we mean by this, right? So uh, in something like C or C++, if we just use a union, it's up to, you know, us as programmers for the outside code to know what that uh, particular union is going to hold. But in the case of a variant, a variant knows which one of its fields are active. All right, so in this case, we'll go ahead and make a variant, and we'll say it'll have an integer uh, and a float, right? So one of these fields will be active, right? But not both, only one. So we'll call one of them V and the other one W. Now, if we want to set one of the fields to be active, all we need to do is assignment, right? So we'll say V is equal to 12, and this will set the integer field to be active. Now, if we did something like had a string in here, right, and we assigned it to uh, a string, right, that's one way we could do it. But you know, there's a little bit of uh, nuance there in terms of, well, what if you had as your different types, what if you had, say, a string and you had a, um, you know, a constant character pointer, right? So what's going to happen if you try to assign a string to it, right? Is it going to be a constant character pointer or is it going to be uh, going to the string slot, right? So that's something that you know, we should look at the standard to understand better uh, for your particular needs. So. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about, right, is what happens if we want to set, say, a variant equal to another variant? What happens? So to set w, right, so w is our other variant that we haven't set yet, we can use this get function. So we can use get int, and this will get the int field, right, if it's active from v. If it's not active, this will fail, right? So there's something called type punning that you can do with something uh, uh, like a union, which basically is where you circumvent the type system. Right, so in the case of say something like a union, this would mean, you know, there's a certain field, maybe the int field of a union active, but you try to access, you know, parts of it that belong to the double field, right? So with something like type bunning, you can basically trick the type system by saying, okay, well, this isn't this kind of pointer, it's a different kind of pointer. So uh, variants protect against this, right? By making sure that if you try to get something that is not currently active, it will fail. So we can use get int to get the int field. We can also just index it, right? So we can get zero, and this is just positional, right? So int is zero, float would be one, right? So we'll get int at position zero, or we can just use straight assignment, right? If we use straight assignment, uh, and we can just ignore get and bypass get completely. Now, what happens if we uh, uh, if we try to get something, right? So if we try to index, you know, pass the bounds of you know the number of types, or if we try to uh, what if we try to get a type that's not currently active, right? So what we'll, we'll end up getting is this, uh, we'll, we'll have to catch this bad variant access. So we'll have that with this get float of W. So we just assigned V to W, which means that the int field in W is active. So when we call get float, this will fail with a bad variant access, right? But we'll catch it and we'll just print out the float field isn't active right now. And that'll be it for this example. So let's go ahead and compile this. So we'll just do G++. We'll have to set the standard equal to C17, like I said. We'll go ahead and pass in variants.cpp and then dash O. We'll just call it variants. Right? So there's our binary. Let's go ahead and run variants. Right? And we get simple example. The float field isn't active right now. So that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. Right, other stuff on GPU programming, parallel programming. And we got our C++, uh, C++ crash course here. So this is going to be under the standard library and under variants here. So feel free to download this, play around with it, check it out for yourself, some any questions that you may have or any suggestions you have for a particular you know, concept that you would like covered next 
a lot of the next you know series of videos will be about you know optimization and using things like benchmarking to help with optimization um, as well as you know getting introduced to things like debuggers like GDB but that's going to go ahead and do it for today feel free to check me out on Twitter as well at accelerator Nick but that's going to do it for today like I said I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day